What's going on everybody? Today I want to take a closer look at the newly buffed Bishop and I'm trying to figure out if I want to take this champion up to rank 3 or not. So I'm over here on the beta where I did take him up to rank 3. On the live servers he's still at rank 1 but I do actually have him awakened on the live servers as well. And I have an entire list of pros and cons all laid out already, which we'll dig through towards the end of this video. But first things first, I want to give you guys a realistic view at how Bishop plays. And in order for this to be realistic, I'm not going to be increasing his SIG level, and I'm not going to be filling out an entire team of synergies. Because honestly, you would need like eight or nine champion slots uh, if you wanted to give him all the synergies in the world. Because look at this. He's got five of them here, four of them which are identical. They're just called energy conduits, which allow you to start the fight with a bar of power and a couple of prowess. But then, of course, you know, you could turn him into a horseman. And there's a couple of other synergies with some random champs that give you increased prowess potency. And we're not going to look at all that stuff today. What I want to do, however, is I do want to include one of these energy conduits. So, again, I'll just be starting the fight with a bar of power and two prowess. And I'll explain why that's important later on. But first things first, these champions all suck. Every single one of them. You can maybe make an argument for Doctor Strange, but I would say no. The champion needs to be buffed. Every single one of these champions here needs to be buffed. And normally I would say that's a major downside of a champion. The fact that you want to drag along someone that's not going to be of much use to you outside of just boosting the character you actually want to play. But because Kabam is buffing three champions a month, it's only a matter of time before one of these champs gets buffed. And let's just pretend it's Electro, which don't read into this. I have no idea which champions are getting buffed next. But let's just pretend it's Electro. And um, man, it'll be such a coincidence if, coincidence if it actually is. But um, let's pretend it's Electro and, and he gets buffed. That'll no longer be a downside for, for Bishop, right? So I'd say that's a, a temporary con to Bishop. Uh, and the reason why I have him on the team will become clear soon. When I go into the actual fight, the first thing you notice is that I'm running the Suicide Masteries, and I'm going to be able to shrug off the bleed immediately just by holding block. So there we go. The bleed is now gone. Now, you do have to consume a Prowess in order to do that, but even without that synergy, I mean, look at this. Prowess, it just kind of builds up naturally on, on Bishop here. Um, you gain Prowess by blocking hits or getting hits, and you gain additional prowess by uh, parrying. You also gain additional prowess anytime you're fighting against a, uh, a skill opponent, since you have that class advantage. And because uh, Winter Soldier were allowed to parry his projectile hits, we can really gain a lot of prowess with this guy. So now I have 45. I'm going to launch the special too. And now we have an incinerate taking away for 5k. Uh, now, the incinerate damage, it's 70% of whatever damage you deal on your special 2. So if you land critical hits, which I did get a couple of critical hits, it's going to amplify that damage even further. So, yeah, sometimes the, the incinerate's going to be insane. Sometimes it's, it's just going to be all right. Something that I want you to watch out for this time, however, is just watch my power meter. Um, you're going to see that the, ener the, 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 the power meter, it kind of goes gray for a second there. I don't consume the energy right away. Uh, and you might be thinking like, well, what's the deal with that? Why does that even matter? You still lose the power, right? Well, the way that Bishop has always worked and the way that he continues to work is that he can actually carry power over from fight to fight. So watch what happens when I end this fight with a special two. Actually, he'll, he'll just die from this, right? Yeah, there we go. So I end the fight with a special two. And by the way, you're going to notice that Bishop is extremely suicide friendly because not only was I able to shrug off the uh you know the bleed at the start of the fight but you want to end the fight with special twos which means you're going to get out of taking that recoil damage um so yeah you actually don't take that much recoil with with bishop as long as you're playing him correctly um but because i ended the fight with a special two you can see i have two persistent charges and i'm carrying over those two bars of power in addition to the energy conduit that's why i'm putting electro on the team it's all about the fights beyond the first fight as to why I'm bringing an energy conduit. So now I'm going to start the fight with three bars of power. And normally it'd be like, okay, so you get to start the fight with a special three. Is that really that big of a deal? Well, with Bishop, it kind of is because check out his special three. It gives you a 100% chance to inflict a non-stacking energy vulnerability, which reduces energy resistance by 13,000, I'm sorry, 1,300. Uh, for 20 seconds, 13,000, that'd be a little ridiculous. Uh, I, to be honest, I'm not even sure exactly how much that energy vulnerability does, but you're going to see that it's 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 quite a bit. 
Uh, and then there's an additional note here on the special three that says against enemies at full health, this energy vulnerability becomes indefinite. So you're going to see, uh, dude, I'm just going to launch a special three at the start of the fight. They're going to have this energy vulnerability permanently on the opponent. And then every time I do basically anything here with Bishop, whether it's special one or special two, they're just going to take additional damage. Um, so yeah, let's, I'm going to build up to a special two now. And this is not a class advantage fight any longer. And I don't have bullets that I can gain additional prowess from um, by, you know, getting like double parries on those. So I'm not going to have as many prowess on me, but this is this is actually more realistic. Um, I mean, technically I could um, parry her special too, but <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, let's just let's just build up my prowess here. You, you, it caps out at 30. But then you, you can temporarily ca uh, carry over more than 30. Like, watch, I'm at 35 and it's depleting itself, right? Um, so 30 is like the like the soft cap. But then if we parry right here... Oh, God, the parry timing's still off. If we parry right here, there we go. So now I'm at 37. Let's launch this special too. And you can see it's, it's taken away for about 5,600. It would have been higher if I landed more crits during that special, but... Uh, <laughs> because I got so many crits the first go around against Winter Soldier, you actually may not have noticed uh, that big of a damage increase. But yeah, again, this is no longer class advantage, and I had fewer prowess. So um, let's let's get another special two going here. I want to parry one more time. There we go, 37, and we could see yeah now it's taking away for 6,000. So. Something else that's really important to note is that she might die from this alone, or she's going to come really close to it. So what you want to do is, uh, be, like, before launching that second special two, you want to just kind of manage your own power. And if you have to pop a special one between your special twos, that's what you should do. Uh, I'm just kind of stalling the fight to explain that, but... I, I didn't even intend to get back to a special two, but whatever. <laughs> I would have just ended the fight normally. But, uh, yeah, whatever. We, we ended up ta tanking enough hits to do that. Let me do another fight here against Winter Soldier, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. We're just going to go in with pretty much the same strategy here with Bishop, but I'm going to intentionally weave in a special one somewhere along the way. What you want to do is you just want to keep an eye on your power meter compared to the opponent's health. Because, again, the goal is to finish the fight with a special two. So we're going to start out fighting the same way uh, that we did before. Parry this. Actually want to parry him again. Alright, 40, 44, that's good enough. And we didn't get any crits, or maybe we got one that time, I don't know. But you could tell it was actually lower damage here than it was the first go-around against Winter Soldier, because we actually got lucky. Let me show you what happens when you block his special 2 as well. Um, Bishop, with his high block proficiency and ability to uh, actually regenerate when holding block, you can see those regen buffs he gains, uh, you know, he's he's pretty darn tanky, man. Um, very sustainable champion. So, let's get myself back up to a special two here. Go ahead, Winter Man. I need you to get to a special, though, bud. Uh, actually, that's good enough. Whatever. 43 prowess. <clears throat> okay, so now launch that. And now I'm looking at things and I'm thinking to myself, Ah, oh, gee, another special two is probably not going to kill this guy, right? Like, maybe after the incinerate ticks, but I I, I, I want to actually finish him off with the initial blast of the special two. So, what you do in that case is you throw a special one right here. Now, the special one, you still want to throw it when you have a high amount of prowess. And you, generally, I would say it's better to throw it when you're close to two bars of power. That way, it's just easier to get yourself back up to two bars of power. But uh, what the special one does is it puts a little aura around you. You can hardly see it. There's a little little cloud, a little dust cloud that's kind of pinkish, purplish uh, on me. And anytime you're close to the opponent, you just apply an incinerate to them. But anyway, now that we've uh, finished that, now, now we've got our power in a perfect spot to just go in and knock out Winter Soldier. And now we can carry over these two bars. So um, that's, that's kind of the, the typical way that I play using Bishop is I'm mostly throwing special twos, but occasionally if I feel like the my power compared to the opponent's health is not timing out the way that I want it to, uh, I actually uh, intentionally throw the special one. 
Now, I didn't get enough chance to talk about the special one, so let's... I'm going to do one more fight here. By the way, you always want to dash back and throw the special. You need you need just that split second for the game to register the energy conduit to give you that, that extra energy. And those stack, too, by the way. Like, if you really wanted to, you could just throw on three of those synergy partners and start with three bars of power, but uh, like, every single time, even the first fight. But I just don't find it necessary um since you know we're able to, to 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 use just one synergy and still get back to um you know three bars of power for the next fight but let's talk about the special one and where that could be used so again it's going to create an aura on myself uh you still want prowess like i said because that is going to increase the duration uh of the special one i could have parried those for additional powers but that's fine uh so now the the aura has an increased duration on it and anytime I'm just close to the opponent, we're applying this incinerate debuff to them. And it overall is gonna deal less damage than your special two, but I'd see this as a defensive tool, like like you know, if you're if your bishop is on defense, not uh, not when you're playing them, um, it's gonna be annoying. It's gonna be annoying to run up against, right? You're gonna try to prevent Bishop from throwing a special one, but sometimes he's gonna throw it anyway, and then you're gonna have to deal with that incinerate aura. Uh, which, of course, if you bring an Incinerate Immune Champion or someone like Ghost, you'll be okay, but um, for the most part, this special two, two here, oh, excuse me, is going to deal uh, much more damage. And you can see, yeah, that Energy Vulnerability, that is reliable damage at that level. Uh, whereas against Winter Soldier, I was, you know, having to get lucky to deal that kind of damage. Um, but yeah, that Orange supplies those incinerates from the special one, and it also uh, allows you to get through certain nodes like, uh, you know, Pleasure... I think it's called Pleasure to Burn, where you need incinerates on them. Now, here's the tricky spot where I probably should have thrown another special one, because watch this, I'm not gonna... I'm, I'm more than likely, unless I get a lot of crits, I'm more than likely not gonna be able to finish off the opponent right here with this special two. Uh, oh, actually, we were able to finish it off. Okay, cool. <laughs> so we did keep... I, I don't... I don't... It's hard to tell. How many crits I landed there? Maybe it was just one even. I'm not sure. Um, but I have Assassin Mastery on, which uh, is definitely recommended. And as, as a matter of fact, that's pretty much it for uh, Bishop's Toolkit here. There's a couple of other things that, that I left out, like the fact that he has uh, a large amount of energy resistance. He's got uh, about 4,200 as a 6-star rank 3, which I can't recall exactly how much energy resistance that is. I think it's Probably around 60%, but I'd have to use a calculator to uh, to figure that out. Uh, and he also has this uh, debuff feedback, which is mostly a, a class relationship kind of thing. It works for every type of uh, champion, but uh, against the skill champions, you're going to notice it more. It says, each time the opponent purifies a debuff, they instantly receive uh, 2,500 energy damage. Uh, and then the second bullet point there, it is just against skill champions. It says skill champions also receive a passive stun lasting one and a half seconds if the debuff purified was a stun. So, you know, against something like masochism, you could actually use bishop as a counter, but only against the skill class. So, uh, not not quite uh, as powerful. Um, but okay, that's, that's pretty much it. There's a couple of other uh, minor mechanics in here, I would say, having to do with his, his prowess and being overloaded, which just means he's above 30 prowess. But for the most part, I showed what I want to show here. Uh, I real, will real quickly just show my masteries as we get into the pros and cons uh, of the character. Like I said, I am running maxed out assassin, which is av advisable. Um, so that way you can more reliably close out the fights with your special uh, just so that you are carrying that over into the next fight. But uh, also the Suicide Mastery, he's incredibly suicide friendly because, again, you're getting rid of this bleed at the start of the fight. And think about, I mean, think about the second fight I did, right? Forget the first fight, but once I go into the second fight and I have, uh, you know, three bars of power, think about the way that, that that can play out. You pop the special three instantly, right? And then you build up to a special two, and in some quests, I mean, that might be enough to kill the opponent right there, but for the most part, it's not going to be. So you hit him with a special two, that drops them pretty low, you, and you are going to take recoil damage from that, uh, and then you build up to another special two, and you finish the, the fight off with that special two. So really, out of the three specials that it, that it takes to get through most fights, you're only taking one, instant, one instance of recoil. Um, combine that with, like I said, being able to shrug off the bleed, and yeah, the suicides, they're, they're almost a pure benefit 
to Bishop. Um, but I will consider it, uh, it it's, it's kind of a split pro and con to the champion, actually, where he doesn't necessarily need any particular uh, mastery uh, in order to be effective. But you are going to notice that running this type of mastery setup, you'll, you'll feel the difference. So while not required, uh, I may not end up choosing to, to... I may not play Bishop all that much, but I'm not running Suicide. So a little bit of pro and con. Okay, let's, let's actually look at Bishop himself, though, and go over the full list of pros and cons, not just uh, in a mastery sense here. Let's take a, a closer look at Bishop. So, I would say the biggest pro that I have with this guy is just that he's fun. Uh, it's a different mechanic, being able to carry power over from fight to fight. It's, it's not always something that you can take full advantage of to the point where you're just, like, trivializing content. You know, you're not just going to instantly start with a special three and the opponent's dead. Uh, at least not in most circumstances, uh, right? But... It is something that you can kind of think about in the fight and think about like, oh man, how much power do I want to, to, to take into the next fight? Do I want to start with a special three? Do I only want to start with, you know, a bar of power or something like that? Um, and that's kind of why I like only bringing one energy conduit with me so I can kind of have that flexibility. Whereas if you bring in multiple, then yeah, you pretty much are just going to start with multiple bars, which uh, can be convenient, but I like the flexibility actually. And I just find it really fun, that whole mechanic. Um, I'd say the next biggest pro is just what we haven't really seen yet from Bishop. There must be a lot of things that you can cheese with this guy. I have to imagine there's some there's some different unique things you could do with, with Bishop where you just totally trivialize content. Uh, you know, I, I, I have not tested this guy against Power Shield yet, but I imagine that's a great time <laughs> where your specials are amplified. And then look at the way the special 2 reads. <clears throat> It says here, the last hit has a 100% chance to inflict an incinerate debuff, lasting 10 seconds, dealing 70% of the total damage dealt by this special. So when that's amplified by something, uh, you know, like a node where you're just dealing significantly higher damage, well, so is your incinerate. And you might just be able to, to beat most of those nodes with a single special too. Uh, and that's going to be fun. And I also haven't messed with something like the power back boosts. Um, but I bet you with enough practice, with enough kind of tinkering around, might be able to find a sweet spot with like the, the, the mutant class boost where you gain power back. Hell, maybe you don't even need one of these energy conduits uh, because his special damage is going to be so high and you could generate so much power back. Um, so yeah, I just think there's a lot of possibilities to like really break the game with Bishop, potentially. Uh, again, I, it's not something I've tested, it's just kind of uh, theorizing at this point, but... I definitely see it as a pro for the champion. Let's get back to the more practical pros, though. And I would say block proficiency. Look at this. Why does Bishop have such high block proficiency? The dude is holding a gun. It doesn't make any sense. There are characters like Cole Obsidian that is carrying a big-ass shield, essentially. It's like a weapon that turns into a shield, and his block proficiency is garbage. And Bishop's just like, uh, I have a, a, a gun and a scarf. Which one has given him the block proficiency? I don't know, man, but he's got a, a tremendous amount of block proficiency. Look at this. Um, yeah, so that's definitely a pro. Like I said, combined with the healing, when I showed in uh, against Winter Soldier, against a special two, I find myself just blocking the entire special and coming out with more health than I had going into it. Um, especially when you're not running the suicides. That's the only kind of downside to using suicides with Bishop, in my opinion, is that the healing ability that you get by converting your, your prowess into heals. I'm not even sure where it is in, uh, oh, here it is. Uh, and blocking here, it, it's, it's a 240 heal over five seconds, which is pretty mediocre, but you could stack that up to five and, you know, it stacks with the recovery mastery and you could, you could, you could turn those on sometimes throughout the fight. It's not something that is a huge pro to the champion, but like I said, combined with the high block proficiency, I put it down as a pro. Um, not to mention there are certain nodes, they're rare, but there's certain nodes where you actually need a healing buff on yourself or just any kind of buff, and Bishop has that. Uh, he also has very easy access to prowess, of course, for the times you need that for fights. He has access to incinerate with the special one aura, uh, and just, the, I mean, the special two itself as well, right? Um, he's got uh, the high energy resistance, like I called out again. 
Uh, I don't know exactly the percentage conversion on that, but it's it's pretty substantial. 4,000 is a lot. The only person I know that has like higher baseline is, is like a, an Awakened Guardian. There might be someone else out there as well, but off the top of my head at least, Guardian has uh, higher, but uh, when it comes to energy resistance, yeah, Bishop has a ton of it. Uh, he does not need to be awakened. I haven't really talked about his awakened ability yet, but you gain bonuses depending on uh, how much power you start the fights with. And I think this is tied exclusively to his uh, what's it, his persistent charges, if I'm not mistaken, where the energy conduit synergies, I don't think they actually interact with this because it, even though it says start the fight with that power, it's really at the start of the fight, gain a bar. Uh, in my opinion, they should reword that just to be a little bit more clear because, yeah, you don't actually start the fight with a bar of power. You, you can actually use your special so fast that you, like, the, you don't even have, like, you haven't even gained the bar from the, the synergy just yet if you carry over power. So, a uh, little bit, a little bit, uh, confusing there, but yeah, whatever your persistent charges say, whether it's zero, one, two, or three, that ties into this awakened ability where you gain these bonuses and... I'm not really taking advantage of any of them. Uh, the most important one for for my use cases, which I'm going to mention this as a bit of a pro and a con to the champion, is actually for Alliance War defense. So, it's uh, it's when starting with zero bars, your special attacks become unblockable with a certain amount of prowess. Now, at Sig 40, you need a lot of prowess on this guy. He's probably not going to gain that much prowess. He gains prowess just any time getting hit. So, you know, usually, unless you're using someone like Quake, you are going to be hitting the opponent if you're fighting them, right? Uh, so it's almost impossible to, to prevent, uh, you know, giving prowess to Bishop. There is a, you know, you could also reduce it by using uh, tech champions. If we, let's, let's see, here we go. So... Uh, all these abilities grant plus one prowess versus skill opponents and minus one versus tech. So, where does it say? Yeah, look at this. The, the bullet point right above it, actually. Absorbing the kinetic energy of blocking or being struck generates one stack of prowess. So, you could also just use a tech champion, but uh, for the most part, um, you know, it, it. if you're not prepared to deal with Bishop and he's awakened and high sig level... His specials are going to be unblockable, and that's going to be a little bit of a nasty time. And like I said, Alliance War Defense is actually one of my considerations for ranking this guy up. That's the last, uh, it's one of the last pros that I want to talk about. It's a little bit of a pro and a con, in fact, because I do think that the champion is fairly counterable. But I think he's annoying enough that in an Alliance War situation, he's either going to mess with people's heads and make them have to, you know, try to fit a counter on their team... Or if they don't want to fit a counter on the team, they're going to have to play pretty well in order to not trigger, uh, you know, not allow Bishop to throw his special one. Um, there's some nodes out there that generate power more quickly, and that, that could cause issues. Uh, and then let's say you do take some chip damage, you know, from the special one and, and uh, the incinerates and stuff like that. Um, well, then you're finding yourself, even if you do push him to a special two, having to play kind of perfectly against the champion to, to dex it, and it's eh, it's not that easy to full dex Bishop Special 2, it's possible, but your timing has to be uh, pretty precise. So, yeah, the, the only issue with the unblockable special things, as, as, as far as, like, if you want to put your Bishop on defense, is that you need him at a high Sig level, because at, at Sig 40, he needs 27 prowess. That's never going to happen. It's just, it's just not going to happen. You have to get hit 27 times, uh, and, and Bishop uses all that prowess whenever he activate, activates a special. But if he's at Sig 200, he only needs 10 prowess. That's two five-hit combos against the guy. So, yeah, man, like, that that could actually stack up and happen uh, from time to time. So, I, I, I am considering... I, I'm, I'm considering putting him on defense. You know, actually, let me, let me go to some of the cons first, and then I'll, I'll wrap back around to the pro. The, the first con... Is just that the mutant class is stacked, and it's kind of a situation of like get in line, Bishop. There's there's so many mutants to stack up. Where where do you actually fit in line? You're definitely not last. 
but I would say you're definitely not first either. Even in, in with just the champions that I currently have, uh, I would say, you know, let's let's get let's get Electro off the team for right now. I'd say both Magnetos, uh, Apocalypse, Colossus. I'd want to rank up. Generally, if I'm giving advice for someone, I would say like rank up these four champions first, uh, and then I don't even have Professor X, Namor, uh, Archangel. There might be a few others, and I I even already have Omega Red and Cable ranked up. So yeah, Bishop. I don't know, man. He might be like tenth in line or something like that. However, that con out of the way opens the door for a little bit of a pro again, and that's in Defender Diversity. So if he's like 10th in line, but he might be an okay defender, probably middle of the pack defender, honestly, or definitely not uh, the highest tier defender either. But let's say he's a middle of the pack defender and no one else is ranking them up because, you know, they're not a top priority for them either. This can give me an opportunity to bring something a little bit more unique to an Alliance War situation and put Bishop on defense. Uh, again, I'm a little bit afraid that it's not going to do much if his awakening ability is not that high, but you can kind of counter that with, again, tech champions or Quake or whoever else. So uh, I, I, I kind of want to rank him up just to stick him on defense as part of uh, defender diversity. That, along with him just being a really fun champion to play, those are like the two biggest pros. But we're not done with the cons just yet. So next con is his crit chance. It's abysmal, and he suffers a very similar problem to most mutant champions, I would say, where the, you, you give them all the prowess in the world, and you know, your prowess, you're able to deal a ton of damage uh, on your specials when they crit, because you still need to multiply it by that crit damage rating. And of course, we can up these numbers a little bit through masteries, but we, we, we can't really do it through anything else. He doesn't have anything else in his kit. You can, you can technically throw in other mutant synergies for the champion, but, I mean, if you're going to use synergies for Bishop, you're not really going to use crit synergies. Um, some of the other, uh, you know, better synergies for this guy, um, of course, turning him into a horseman is a great one. This one with Storm Pyramid X it, it might be one of his strongest as well, where you're going to gain, you know, plus 12% uh, attack during specials, and then a unique synergy here as well, which for Bishop, it says every 15 seconds generate a power gain buff, granting 20% of a bar of power, which 20% of a bar of power is pretty weak, but it's something. And then also, while this power gain buff is active, each prowess increases special attack damage by an additional 3%. Now, prowess, each one for Bishop is 10%. So adding an additional 3% on top of that for each one of those, like, that's actually pretty good, man. It's a 30% increase overall. Uh, and yeah, that little bit of extra power gain, that might make it so that you don't have to, you know, occasionally weave in those special ones. You might just be able to throw special twos and then have that additional power kind of, you know, boost you along to make sure you can get back to your specials in time. Um, or maybe you would still have to throw special ones, but it'll just make the process uh, smoother. So yeah, he's got this synergy. Uh, I didn't go over this one with, uh, with Psylocke, but just for the sake of completion in this video, let's, let's read it real quick. It says opponents are purified for one second after they fill a bar of power, reducing the regeneration and power gain effectiveness by 100%. This petrify is paused during Bishop and Psylocke's special attack. So, uh, I don't think that you would use this in too many situations, but let's say you... Uh, you know, if you can kind of stop an opponent from regenerating. Bishop, his animations for his specials are decently long, so you can have that Petrify up in a pinch when needed. Uh, and then also you can pop Bishop's special one, you can stack up, you, you can get in the opponent's face, um, stack up a few of those incinerates, and then pop another special, and technically you'll have a, a moment where you're reversing health. Uh, it could be good against like the, uh, you know, like the iron... Iron Man characters that have that regen near the end of their health pool, where, you know, just allow you to finish the fights faster. It's not, it's really not that big of a deal. I don't consider it to be that powerful, of, powerful of a synergy. But then, of course, you can drag in multiple of these if you really wanted to. So, you can't, the, the bottom line is you cannot really afford to squeeze in uh, the mutant crit synergies here to boost your, your, your crit chance. It's just not going to happen. So, uh, there's going to be a lot of times where you're... 
your damage is going to be lower than you're anticipating it to be. And you, you'll be disappointed by that. It's the same effect that happens if you've ever played Gambit and you wind up like crazy. You get all 10 of your kinetic charges and then it hits for not very much. Uh, so, yeah, it's pretty disappointing. As far as the stats go, though, that's that's really the only issue. Uh, attack and health wise it, it is fine. His basic hits are not very strong, but that's almost a benefit for you in helping you to uh you know kind of end the fight on your terms with a special attack you're not going to end it usually with regular attacks um or it just gives you more control to not do that um so yeah that that part's uh fine actually um and that's i, I would say like that's for the most part the entire list of pros and cons I, I have about this guy ultimately i am very much so contemplating taking bishop to rank three again the primary reasons are it's fun as hell because he's just a different champion than than other champions that we've uh, that we really have access to. Uh, he has high possibilities to cheese certain content, um, even though I haven't you know practiced any of that to, to show you guys here. Uh, and potential to be a unique defender that my other alliance mates are probably not going to rank up. So, do I recommend Bishop to everyone as a as a priority rank up or something like that? No, I don't. But don't be too surprised if you see me having a rank three Bishop uh, in the coming weeks. Even I'll, I have to think about it more. But yeah. In any case, hopefully you guys enjoyed this breakdown of the newly buffed Bishop. Uh, if you guys have gotten a chance to test the champion for yourself, put that in the comments. Put down, you know, where you found the champion to be most useful, or even if you haven't played him, just an area that you can kind of think of that could be potentially useful uh, to, to bring Bishop to. But uh, yeah, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.